The IRS just released the 2024 tax brackets, which are adjusted for inflation. And you're probably wondering how they're going to affect you. But more importantly, what you can do to still reduce your taxes and prepare for 2024. So first, I'm going to go through what those tax bracket changes are. And then I'm going to share with you what I would look for throughout the course of the year and what you can do to prepare for 2024 so you don't have any tax surprises. So let me go ahead and pull it up on the screen and let's go through it together. So here I have the 2024 tax brackets and right here I have the 2023 for comparison. So if you're not familiar with how our taxes work, we have a progressive tax system. So our tax rates go from 10 to 37%. And the more that you earn, the higher rate that you actually pay. So on everybody's taxes, the first dollar that is taxable is always going to be at 10%. And then the amounts that are over 11,600, if you're filing a single, is going to be at 12%. So for example, let's say that you're earning $100,000 filing a single. You might think that you're in the 22% tax bracket. And therefore, because 100000 falls within this bracket, that every dollar is going to be taxed at 22%. That would not be true. The first dollar is still going to be taxed at 10%. And then it's going to move to 12 And then finally, the last dollar that you're earning, that is your tax bracket. That would be at 22%. So even those that are in the 37% tax bracket, they're still paying only 10% on that first dollar. So if they're single, that's gonna go from zero to 11,600. If you're married filing jointly, that's a little bit more. That's gonna go from zero to 23,200. And if you're head of household, that's from zero to 16,550. And the standard deductions increased from 2023 to 2024. I had the 24s down here. So for singles, it's going to 14,600 up from 13,850. Married filing jointly, that's 29,200. And then for head of household, that's 21,900. So what this means is that the first dollar that you're earning is actually not taxable up to that standard deduction. Then every dollar that's over the standard deduction gets applied to this 10% tax bracket. And again, if you're filing a single, that goes from zero to $11,600. So if we take a look at this quick tax calculator that I built, you can kind of see how the taxes work. So this is going to be for 2024 up here. And if we have filing a single earning $100,000, what we could see here is the first 14,600 is actually in the 0% tax bracket, so it's not taxed. That is the standard deduction. It's $14,600. Then the 11,600, that is gonna be taxed at our 10%. And if we hover over this, we could see that 10% right there. And then the next $35,550 will be at 12%. And then the next 38,250 would be at 22%. So our total tax liability, if we're earning $100,000, would actually only be $13,841, which is still in the 22% tax bracket. Now our average tax, also known as our effective tax rate, is 16.21%. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, these are the 2024 tax brackets adjusted for inflation, which is probably something that you're feeling and experiencing right now. And unfortunately, as costs rise, our incomes don't always keep up with that. So this is also a really good point to understand why you should understand how your taxes work and what those tax brackets are, and also your credits and your tax deductions really to put you in the driver's seat so you understand what you can do to reduce your taxes and put more money back in your pocket. So let me walk you through an example of how you can make a couple of these types of adjustments to actually reduce your taxes. So here's a scenario of somebody that's married filing jointly earning 188,000. And a lot of people wanna save into the raw side of the retirement plans with the idea that they're gonna have all this tax-free income in retirement, and that might be true. But if you take a look a little bit closer look at your taxes, let's say that we made the contribution to our pre-tax 
401k rather than the Roth 401k. So in 2024, those limits are actually increasing. I have them right here. So in 2023, they're at 22.5, but they're going to go up to 23,000 in 2024. So if we made that max contribution, it's going to bring our adjusted gross income from 188,000 down to 165,000. So if we take a look at this scenario and we scroll down just a little bit, we see our standard deduction right here at 29,200. So that's going to bring our taxable income to 1588. And if we did the pre-tax side, it would be at 1358. So that means our total taxes would actually drop from 25,042 to 19,982 by making the change from making that contribution to the Roth side of our retirement plan over to the pre-tax side. But this doesn't mean that we're only gonna save in taxes by changing that contribution. If we take a look at some of the tax credits or deductions that we might qualify for, by making that shift, we're actually able to qualify for the full amount of our student loan interest deduction. So over here, we could see that we are under the limit so we can get the full amount. Now, two other credits are the lifetime learning credit here and the American Opportunity credit here, where we're starting to get into a phase out. Now, if we take this a step further and we make a contribution to our traditional IRA for our spouse, because our spouse in all of these scenarios is still under the limit to make a contribution directly to the traditional IRA as a deductible contribution. So if we do that and we make a $7,000 contribution, which is going from 6,500 in 2023 up to 7,000 in 2024. So by doing that, we're gonna re further reduce our taxes and qualify for the full amount of the lifetime learning credit, which is up to a $2,000 tax credit or the American Opportunity Credit up to a $2,500 tax credit. What that means is that right here, our $18,442 in total taxes would actually go down by $2,000, assuming that we got the full amount of the lifetime learning credit. So then it would be only $16,000 $442. And if you're someone that's trying to retire early before age 59 and a half, which you might not know, what a lot of people don't know, is that you can actually access your retirement plans before 59 and a half and avoid the penalties. You just have to do it correctly. And you'll probably be in a lower tax bracket early on. So therefore, you're just going to pay even less in total taxes. So there's a lot of wins, a lot of opportunities there. In addition to understanding these brackets and understanding these tax credits and deductions, then goes to your paycheck. And if you understand all this stuff or attempt to, then you can then go back to your IRS form W-4, which affects your paycheck. And by understanding your credits and your tax deductions, you can apply that to your W-4. Just use the IRS form W-4 online estimator. I've done a ton of videos on this, but if you go through it, apply those tax credits, apply those tax deductions, you'll likely get a bigger paycheck. Now at the end of the year, you might get a smaller refund, but that's your money anyways. You don't have to wait until the end of the year, which could be a big win, especially in a year like 2024, where we're experiencing inflation and our paychecks yet haven't caught up. So this could ease that burden. So understand your tax credits and your tax deductions, and then understanding your IRS Form W-4 could help make your 2024 year a little bit easier. I hope this has helped. If you have any questions on this stuff, let me know in the comments down below. And if you've enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and we'll see you on the next one.